From a certain perspective, Brooks Falls is a cornucopia of plenty. It is one of the first places within Katmai National Park where salmon are available to bears. And after a long winter of hibernation and a spring season with little nutritious food, bears feast at the falls to regain their fat reserves. However, access to Brooks Falls and its salmon isn't guaranteed. Productive fishing spots can be limited and a bear's hunger isn't easily sated. The fishing season at the river also overlaps with the end of the bear's mating season, in which mating opportunities are also very limited. The setting is ripe for competition and conflict. But violence is not an inevitable outcome when bears encounter each other. Through their ability to communicate and adapt to a system of dominance and hierarchy, bears survive in a world of limited resources. Dominance is having power and influence over others, right? And a bear wanting to have power and influence over other bears is not about showing off. It's about surviving and thriving. The bear hierarchy really is a product of competition for limited resources. You have the biggest adult males on the top, and then you have the mothers with cubs often right below them. And then it's just like a big mix of single females and smaller adult males in there. Here, this is number 32 attacking. Number 747, really a, a bit of a sneak attack. Chunk is looking to establish his dominance this year over pretty much every bear. Uh, and when bears see that another bear isn't reacting to their uh, approach, if a dominant bear sees that, then they're often, they take the next step and they think, hey, I got to challenge this other bear. So 747 not paying attention, he's sleeping on the gravel island downstream of the falls. To me, that's a sign he's feeling comfortable and secure in that location. He's not used to other bears making an issue of his presence there. So that's kind of new for him. Uh, and then Chunk's sneak attack demonstrates his boldness, his confidence. 747 is a huge bear. So for Chunk to engage him like that means that Chunk is feeling confident and strong. Chunk was saying, hey, I am more dominant than you. I don't care if you're sleeping, I'm gonna let you know. He walked away and he turned his back to 747, which meant that he's saying, I'm comfortable. I don't care. You're not going to come and attack me. I am confident that I am safe and I'm more dominant than you. In the past, 747 had his, his reign at the top of that hierarchy and, and now he's yielding space to Chunk. Age is another um, influencer. Um, as we see with 32, he was playful and tolerant as a young adult. He would play for hours with um, 89 backpack. But now that he's in his late teens, it's time that he move up the ladder and he's big and he's aggressive and he is not tolerant of the bears that he knows and that he's um, been tolerant of before. And we also see older bears like 480 Otis who were you know, pretty strong in the hierarchy. He's a big bear, but he's moved down in the hierarchy and it's a safer, less competitive place for older bears. This is 503 and 856 early in the morning. 856 is the bear approaching the plunge pool below the falls right now, the jacuzzi. 503 is the bear that's kind of moving out of the way, but not really. And I think that's kind of one of the interesting parts of this, because 856 is, again, not used to subordinate bears or, or submissive bears, just kind of hanging out near him. Uh, they usually get the message and leave, when it's over that singular resource, like a fishing spot. But 503 does not do this. He's not particularly challenging 856, but 503, again, ears forward. He's not really looking very defensive right there. 856 clearly paying attention uh, to 503. And eventually we'll get through, um, you know, this sort of posturing 503 circling around and 856 is like, that is enough. You have just not moved away. But then when 856, as he often does, tries to physically engage, 503, it seems like he suddenly realizes that, oh, the strength maybe of 503 is not what I expected. So at first, the dynamic between 503 and 856 played out much like we've seen it happen in the past. 856 displaced 503 initially, but the difference here is that 503 didn't fully dis disengage. Perhaps he realized that he is big enough to challenge 856. When they fought briefly, 856 seemed to realize almost immediately that 503's size and strength were more than he bargained for. So you notice how quickly 856 disengaged. He did the math. He understood that more fighting might not go well for him. And we see him actually walking away. 
A5-6 has been the most dominant bear for most of the last 10 plus years. He really has pulled back this year and um, he's not, not really challenged a lot of bears. 503 has gotten really big. He's 11 now and he's one year younger than 856 was when 856 became the most dominant bear. 503 is, you know, he's huge. He's, got, he's still growing. This was probably one of the most interesting moments that I've seen. The point of hierarchy and dominance is not for bears to fight. It's to avoid conflict. In 2021, when there were upwards of 61 bears at the falls, there could have been a lot of chaos and competition. But overall, there was not a lot of conflict. And that's because of familiarity and the hierarchy. Tolerance and avoidance of conflict is arguably maybe more important uh, for a bear's welfare and health than fighting. Through the, the bear's system of dominance and hierarchy, bears survive in a world with limited resources. At first, the ways in which bears organize themselves at Brooks Falls can really seem messy, maybe even chaotic at times. But a closer look reveals that order in this system. It demonstrates the bear's ability to survive and adapt in the face of change and difficulty.